we just finished watching that Isakai, sorry, ReZero break time episode where Al reveals some secrets and Al's shocking backstory revealed in ReZero spinoff from Mr. Jake. I wonder if there's going to be even more context on exactly what happened. If you're a fan of ReZero, you should be watching the ReZero shorts. Now, for those that don't know, these are like chibi, three minute long episodes mm -hmm. where the various ReZero characters are just messing around. There is break time, but there is also ReZero Petite. It kind of like shuffles, where in season one, it goes break time for the first season. Then the rest of it, season one content, is adapted with Petite. And then in season two, ReZero, we're back to ReZero season two of break time, if that makes sense. But even though they're messing around, it's quite informative because a lot of the time you get cut out content, mm -hmm. stuff like lore, you know, how does the world work? You can find- Yeah, like this one is like Amelia hates peppers, peppers. This one is like Fel telling us about how different stones kind of tell us the different times of the day. This one is actually kind of crazy because Amelia so and Puck actually has a conversation, right? About how did Subaru even know who Puck was in that first fucking arc where Puck and Subaru never met each other in that, you know, perfect run. And then it's like Reinhardt stuff. There is some very um fun slice of life stuff going on, but also very subtle little clues and hints relating to the main story. It's on Crunchyroll or other sites, wink wink. If you've watched Isekai Quartet, it's very similar to that as well, which keep in mind we're going to be getting Isekai Quartet Season 3 soon. We are still gated out from this content because I am literally going to wait until Overlord Season 5 announcement comes out. I don't care about the movie, I do not care. I want a release date for Season 5, even if the release date's not coming out, I'm still gonna fucking hold. I'm gonna backload this content. So why am I talking about the shorts? What's so important about it? That's because we've just gotten a major revelation in the latest episode. The episode in question focuses around Aldebaran. You'll know from my episode analysis, I've talked about how Aldebaran is a shady character Very based dark. on the information he knows. And in this ReZero short episode, which again is only three minutes long, Al's history and his past is finally revealed to Subaru. Now, for those that know what that history is, well, that- Bro, this is Al. <laughs> Can anyone go make some crazy theories about how Al is actually Subaru's dad, bro? But that wouldn't make sense, because Subaru's dad still existed before Subaru fucking Isekai, you know? That makes no fucking sense. You can say it's like a different alternate timeline, Dad. Why not? Why not? They're both from Tokyo, you know? It, 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 it is him. Fuck it. That should have been revealed to us in Season 1 of the ReZero anime. Um, but it was cut content. But now, people speculate it'll be in ReZero Season 3. But so far, it hasn't appeared in the first four episodes. However, it's now been revealed in a random ReZero Break short. time. So if you're a ReZero anime watcher, I highly recommend you go watch the episode now because yep. I'm going to be talking about it. Uh, so check the pinned comment. I'm going to give a quick synopsis for those that did not watch the episode. But the episode starts with Subaru asking Aldebaran why does he call him bro? Kyodai. And essentially what Al does is he says a few expressions. Mm -hmm. These expressions are Japanese expressions. Idioms, right? Garfield saying all that bullshit in season two, we have no clue of because we're not locals to the, you know, uh, easier world. And these also, whenever Al's saying all these different idioms, Bieko has no clue because these are Japanese idioms. And not only that, they're from the same fucking hometown, Tokyo. And Subaru knows the answer to them. From that, Subaru realizes that Aldebaran must be from Japan. And Subaru's like, oh my god, like you didn't tell me this. And Aldebaran is like, well, I thought you knew. And, of course, Subaru is trying to explain the situation to Beatrice, who doesn't understand what's going on. But Subaru and Al say they're from the same hometown. They don't say they're from a different world. Not only Dokyo. that, we then hear Al say that the only person he's met that's from a different world is, of course, Subaru himself. Mm -hmm. And Al reveals that he's been in this world for 19 years now. Mm -hmm. Now, do keep it. Now, it doesn't mean that he got, like, like, when he got, you know, ported here, it's still not really clear. Like, 19 years ago, he got isekai'd. 
he could have gotten straight up isekai as a fucking baby 19 years ago, but that doesn't make sense because he seems to know some awareness, right? So I'm just going to assume that, you know, he got isekai around like Subaru's age. So if we do that, then Al may be in his late 30s, early 40s. That's kind of what I'm estimating. In mind, this does make some sense because, of course, um, in the original manga and light novel, Al said 18 years. But now it's been 19 years because... Yeah, because one year has passed since, you know, season 3 content versus season 2 and beyond. Before. ...of the one year time skip. Um, because this reveal has been delayed by a year in ReZero time. Um, but not only that, there's one more serious and suspicious thing Al... Biko ...says. The suspicious thing that Al says is when he says, Make sure you always protect my bro. That bit is not suspicious. It's the fact that he says Biako afterwards. That nickname makes no sense since Al has never contacted Beatrice ever in this show. From what the anime has shown us. Now, maybe they've met somewhere else. Does it make sense that Al has ever like secretly interacted with Biako? But like, it's, it's not about interacting with Biako. It's about knowing that Beatrice's pet name, the nickname, is Biako that Subaru gave. And I don't really remember any moments where we've really said Biko out loud around Al. So now this really suggests something else entirely. That, like, how could he have gotten this knowledge? One of the most simple, most intuitive answers could be that Al is Subaru. And knowing ReZero with different timelines and, you know, time travel powers and mechanics, he could be Subaru from a future past timeline. I don't fucking know. But this is very precarious about how he said Biko. Protect my bro. Sounds like... You know, Biko was unable to protect Al in a different fucking timeline in the past? I'm not sure. Now, for those that don't know, Biko is... Even if Al has been to the library, it doesn't mean that he should know the term Biko. That's the thing. You could theorize that Al visited Biko in the library when Biko was waiting, right? We saw many different people visit the library, like Otto's dad. But that nickname could never have been known unless Subaru has directly said Biko around Al. Is the nickname that Subaru gives to Beatrice. So the question is, why is Aldebrand using that nickname for Beatrice? Beatrice, of course, says that only Subaru can call her that. Mm -hmm. And then Al says something very, very ominous afterwards. Yeah, I know. Al responds by saying, yeah, I know. As in, I am Subaru. <laughs> like, bro, what? That's crazy. Only Subaru can say Biko. Yeah, I know, because I am Subaru. Like, um, huh? And then he goes on to say, all too well, which doesn't make sense. How does he know that Beatrice doesn't want other people to call her Biko? How does Aldebrand know that only Subaru is allowed to call Biko? Fuck it, bro. Al is the true sage at this point. <laughs> he just knows this shit. I don't know. But the, like, 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 maybe it's a bit too basic, but at this point, Al and Subaru, the connections, like the allegations, he ain't beaten this shit. Trust with that nickname. It doesn't really make sense because this is the first time where Aldebrand actually calls Beatrice Biako. Keep, keep in mind, Al has never met Beatrice before. Mm -hmm. This is the first time they're meeting, you know, because she was in the mansion. And since the one year time skip, Subaru's not met with Al. So how does Al know the nickname? Maybe he, he heard it from Subaru himself, but... We haven't seen a scene like that ever happen. That, that's definitely not out of the question. But the way that break time made Al say, yeah, I know all too well, there's some very ominous, shady aura coming off that scene. This is not just like a casual thing that he's saying. The show... Is directly hinting, just literally not even hinting. It, it, they're just saying it out loud that like, yup, this guy, bro, look at him. What do you think is happening? Do you think that he's maybe Subaru? Why does Al sound so sad when he's saying this? Because like it, <laughs> there, 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 there's, there's like other like theories, you know, stuff like that, different, you know, timelines and stuff. I could 100% think that Al is Subaru from like, I don't know if I can, Failed timeline where vehicle couldn't protect Al the Alta. I don't fucking know, but it just seems like Al may be Subaru. There's like a connection there. Again, this does lead to the sort of Subaru and Aldebaran are the same person mm. theory, 
And then, you know, you talk about the constellation, right? The location of Pleiades and Aldebaran and how Aldebaran points towards, you know, Subaru kind of like follows him. There's even like more subtle hints like that. And Nagatsu Itapi loves doing that shit. Because they're very similar. And that's the reason why Aldebaran's covering his face. But again, it's extremely ov ominous. So something I want to talk about that... Mm, this is season one cut content. Royal Selection, we're about to be Priscilla's Appa carrier. And Al reveals... You know, the Isekai identity and the Great Waterfall. Many people have missed is that when this information was first revealed, it was when, of course, Subaru jumps in Priscilla's carriage yeah. and they go to the Royal Selection. This is, of course, when Subaru makes a fool out of himself and then, you know, he argues with Amelia and so on and so forth. You guys know what happened in season one. But in this interaction, this is when Al actually says to him, Look, you were summoned as well. I know how you feel, blah, blah, blah. And what is missed in this three minute short is we don't get Priscilla's reaction and her comments where she states that there are talks where people say they've come from the beyond great, the Great, great waterfall. waterfall. Yeah, yeah. And then it gives us a beautiful shot of the ReZero world. And this is where we learn that the ReZero world is actually flat. flat. And my conspiracy theory is that during the Great Calamity, the specific phrasing of the Witch of Envy consumed half the world is the reason why the reason the world is flat that's one of my tinfoil theories that i want to die on the hill and at every side of the world there's a great waterfall which just falls down and priscilla talks about the fact that some people claim to come from beyond mm -hmm. the edges of the world basically otherworlder that's their interpretation of otherworlder because there could be nothing beyond the great waterfall what do we know about the great waterfall around outside being the edges um Sekhmet died falling off of it. <laughs> she also pushed the Volcanica beyond the Great Waterfall. I wonder, is it just fall damage? Is, is there nobody down there? I, I don't know. Like, where's World Volcanica? I mean, he got pushed beyond the Great Waterfall. What does that really mean? Is he in a different world now? If we're going to take Priscilla's statements, you know, this phrase like, other worlders are beyond the Great Waterfall. Did Volcanica go to a different fucking world? Who knows? And Aldebrand and Subaru are from beyond the world mm. okay but this is not in the three minute long episode and it's a shame now if you're someone that has watched my videos for a long time you might be used to this image on screen and this is my evidence that shows that this conversation in the carriage did actually happen in season one and the reason for that is because of this kansai dialect are you kidding me did Al say it? Maybe Subaru said it? Obviously, Anastasia's talking right now. If they're both kind of saying Kansai dialect as a reference, then you're pretty much implying that they're both Japanese. That you should know each other. Like, how, what the fuck? Exchange that Subaru and Aldebaran have. Subaru comments that Anastasia has a Kansai dialect. And he goes, are you kidding me? Okay? Then look at Aldebaran's response. Mm. He, no joke, he says... Evidently, everyone in Western Kararagi speaks that way. Mm. How would our Kansai dialect, right? How would you know about the Kansai dialect? This is, I guess, White Fox subtly kind of hinting at, you know, Al's true identity, where he's from. I don't know what a Kararagi accent is. How could he respond to Subaru like that? Look, look at Subaru's eyes. Mm. He's obviously looking at Aldebaran. This happens actually a lot in season 3 too. Maybe in the most recent episode where Al says like, Oh, so I guess T-Phone's around then, huh? He's like, what? The fuck? If you meet Gluttony, don't tell him his name. What? What the fuck? But Subaru doesn't have a shocked reaction. That's because at this point... At this point, is it like an, like an animator, like a direction, like plot hole? Or is this basically they have confirmed with each other? But... As in back of the carrots, and that shit was like quote unquote off screen. But if we look at the break time and the surprise, then that's clearly not the case. So I think there is this is a very rare instance of inconsistency in the anime and how you know the other material is presented. Subaru already knows that Aldebrand is from Earth because they've already had that conversation. It was just mm. caught off screen. It yeah. just wasn't on screen. This is the evidence for it in season one. I don't think this is a huge problem. I think that there's obviously some miscommunications, maybe with Tape and White Fox and trying to, how are we going to introduce this bombshell, right? And 
you know, this is fucking eight years ago, man. Like, obviously, things going to change, you know, your planning schedule. Maybe they even fucking, fucking forgot about this shit. So I don't think that this plot hole is really so, like, bad. If you don't believe me, go back and watch the episode. This is all true. Now, as you can imagine, there's quite a lot of drama surrounding this information being released in a random short that most people are not going to be watching. How many people do you know watch the three minute long chibi re-zero episodes not many and you'd be surprised right you're like wow why the fuck wouldn't you watch more re-zero content i mean the viewership is always the same like every time i upload a re-zero you know reaction everyone fucking loves that shit they eat that shit up and about like i don't know like um less than 50 percent Less than 30% maybe of those, that, that same audience will then watch the break time episode reactions as well, right? Obviously, YouTube numbers are not pure, like, data that suggests this, but there, I think there is, like, a scaling coefficient ratio where there is always a lessened amount of viewership from the same exact ReZero audience. So I think that um, we often forget that we are in this super sweaty echo chamber where... Everything, everyone should know and seek out the extra side content, the cut content. But for the average consumer watching ReZero, I don't think they really care. They don't really understand even the story per se. Even if they watch the break time, would they be able to make the connections in their head? I'm not too sure. Not many. So a lot of people are upset and you can see one of the tweets here. I actually do agree with this sentiment. On screen, you can see a filler character that was from the Lost in Memories ReZero phone game. So you cool. would assume she's a non-canon, right? Well, that's wrong. She's now canon to the main story of ReZero because she appeared in a ReZero side story. This is Alec Hoshin. You know Isekai Quartet, they revealed him, right? You know the legendary Hoshin of the Wastes that was mentioned in Season 3, Episode mm. 1? Well, if you want to know about him... I think he was first mentioned in season two by Garfield and the idiom of how Hoshin would like, you know, destroy an entire town or something, a small city, because they didn't do what he said. Something Hoshin, you know, grazing down banan, I forget, but it's, I think that's when he first got kind of like uh, hinted at. You have to look at the Isekai Quartet movie. Yeah. The Isekai Quartet movie. Where that was his first. Oh, there's a movie? Wait, wait, wait. Isekai Quartet straight up has a fucking movie? That's crazy. I thought they were shorts. I thought Isekai Quartet was straight up shorts. They have a movie? That's, ins That's crazy. Reveal, by the way. A random side story, which was not even Re Zero, it was Isekai Quartet. That's hilarious. Do you want to learn about how Subaru beats women? <laughs> what, what is the transition? I know, I know what Jake is doing. He's bringing up, you know, crazy fucking examples from other side stories that's not part of the main anime canon shit. But like that transition was wild. <laughs> you know this guy? He's the guy quartet movie. Do you want to know how Subaru beats women? Holy shit, Jake. Namely, Echidna. Well, too bad. You have to be. In is this the if greed route where Subaru gets so mad? I don't know, like, you know, is this the greed route where he took the fucking contract and he realized that this is a fucking scam, there's a kid that's only trying to do a 100% completionist run to fucking, you know, torture Super and get more content than he beats the shit out of her? Japan, and you have to buy every single Season 2 <laughs> ReZero Blu-ray DVD, and then once you buy them all, and you submit all of your coupons, you get the elusive greed if. Light novel, which contains the information about Subaru beating women, and Damn, it also contains based. extra. It looks like Subaru has joined the club in based anime characters who are proponents of true gender equality. Kazuma from Konosuba for sure. Mash from Mash, you know, Magicka Muscles. I've seen of Suplex a bitch. Uh, Noel from the Strongest Talker clan anime happening this season also just, you know, fucked up the girl, right? There's Subaru as well. I just wish that Sanji from One Piece would smack a hoe too. Lore. Yeah, Cautious Hero, right? Ryuin, Cautious Hero for sure. Most of that is unknown to the majority of the ReZero audience. Anyways, that's it. What do we learn today? 
we learned that the side content is extremely important. And I don't think that casual ReZero watchers are even watching these videos, right? If you just go to the ReZero playlist, right? Let's, let's, let's look at the actual, like, my ReZero playlist. We might watch this. By the way, check, that, check out this guy's channel if you haven't. It's, it's pretty amazing content. And uh, before we do that, please go give Jake a like in the video. Check out his channel if you haven't. Here it is. But what I'm trying to get at is ReZero, Kafka TV, right? If we look at the playlist of, you know, the content, you'll notice that the, um, the cut content, obviously, this is cut content. This is, you know, more side story. But and this is like an actual episode, right? An actual episode, cut content, cut content. You can see that there is a drastic shift in the viewership. Like around like 30% of the actual overall people that watch this will watch the cut content, right? And even more so with, I guess, you know, extra video essay views like this, it's not going to get the same type of viewership. So I think that we're really uh, preaching to the choir when we make these videos and say, hey, you should go watch the side content because nobody that should be, you know, that, that should be hearing this are even watching this video, if you know what I mean. But like, if you haven't checked it out, the cut content, break time, petite, you know, use the internet, you can find them, Isekai Quartet, you know, there's so much good content, and check out the Annie's Cut content, there's any, many other people who does, you know, crazy, um, ReZero cut, can, cut content that really enhances your overall experience of ReZero, because, you know, the more you know about shit, and you're not even really being spoiled either, right? You're not being spoiled, you're simply being aware of the stuff that you should be aware of at this current point in time of the anime timeline, but, you know, for whatever reason, they cut that shit out, but that's it from me. Bye-bye.